everyone. Hi, y'all. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Davina. And welcome back to Whoosh Bang Pow. Uh, so we just got done. <laughs> to, like he's moving his leg. It's you can't his little, see it. It's his little nervous tick and he moves the couch uh, every time he does it. It's I'm like, sorry, stop. But it's exciting. Um, yeah, we just got back from watching Wonder Woman. Oh, uh, It was my yes. second viewing. Um, <laughs> dude, I'm sorry. Well, this is my fresh one. I, I saw no, it on Friday the funny, night. The funny thing was, so I was saying um, to Robert because we wanted he wanted to come reluctantly like, because he wants to get interested in stuff that I'm mm -hmm. interested in, and he was like, "No, we can see it next weekend yeah. because he wants it to be a fresh viewing instead of us going in a friend group that was watching it last night." Okay. Only to come to find out that it's your second viewing, and my first viewing. Yeah. No, but I mean, I cool. you know I was. A, I, I just I didn't want to wait. I didn't want right. to wait until to, to su it's Sunday. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to wait until Sunday, so I, I watched it earlier because it was fucking. It awesome. was phenomenal. Oh uh, if you've not seen Wonder Woman, uh, spoiler alert: we're gonna have spoilers in this. Yes, yeah, spoilers. Review. This is this review um, will contain spoilers. Spoilers. Yes, it will. Spoilers. 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 You have been warned. There are spoilers. Okay. So now that you've been warned. Uh, that we're going to give spoilers. Uh, Jeremy, what's your grade? My grade was an A+. Plus. Yeah, I'd have to say it's an A+. Plus, and I've, written, I, I've read a few reviews out there. I've also read some reviews that have been pretty misogynistic in nature. Mm -hmm. so, one of the things, and that's, speaking of it, one of the things that I did appreciate about the movie, particularly in the the Themyscirian scenes and everything mm -hmm. is, I mean, she's gorgeous. Yes. She's, they, mean, all, they all were gorgeous. Everybody. Take, yes. take me to the Amazon island. She wants to go please. to Themyscira right now. <laughs> but they, I may be the shortest cow there, but yes. damn it. But it wasn't even like reflected on a thought. It was no. just a given and a thing. And then you get into man's world and it's like, hubba hubba. Yeah. But at the same time, what I appreciate about it is her nonchalance towards it as well. It's like, well, you don't have beautiful women elsewise. <laughs> like, what what the hell? Uh, uh, I re and speaking of like massaging, I also appreciate what they did in this more modern take because every time that she enters a situation that is supposed to be, because it's it takes place in World War One, uh -huh. so it's. Like the the nineteen what tens nineteen eighteen yeah nineteen eighteen so it takes place way back then it's clearly man's world at this mm. time but her 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 ability to be able to just to blow past that and just and not even really trying to force people to see but just the fact that she refuses to accept that her voice will not be heard and her help will not be taken when she has the ability to do all of the things that she can do. Mm -hmm. So I'd I love that about it. Yeah. Uh, Gal, Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot, yes. Gal Gadot um, did a wonderful job. Her, she does naive in just the right amount of naivety Yeah. Uh, for it to, for it not to get hokey or mm -hmm. cheesy. Um, I mean, she's, she was perfect in that role. Yeah. I can't imagine actually any other actress in that role. No, 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 no. Uh, her acting was really, I think, yes. I've, I have mean, from Fast and the Furious to where she is now, her acting, not that it was bad, but it, she's definitely gotten better yes. as an actress. Um, With all the emotions that she's pulled, grief, yeah. frustration, yeah. the scene particularly, and again, we told y'all spoilers, the scene um, where... All was for naught after you know saving that village, and then the right. monster gas bomb hit, and the just the frustration that comes over her when she just looks around and it's just like yeah, there's just death and gas all around her. Yeah, it's, um, that was actually the scene that got me was the end scene where she's like in shackled. Mm -hmm. She's shackled by the by the, the metal, and then she sees the. You know, the, I'm not going to totally give away this, but there's the emotional. Part. I don't want to totally give away the ending. But, there's a, there's but the emotional that happens, climax. And, it just makes her, and she ugh. sells it in the like vengeance of it all. Yes. Um, that that whole that scene when she rushes through the guys, yeah, and, and you she, can still see the yeah. pain and the rage in her face. Kudos. Yeah. And that was the other thing. It was well shot. It well shot, and then kudos to her as well because. Now there's a couple issues that I can t with editing where there's a couple times where you can see 
the devil. But right. aside from those, like, she's very convincing in action. Scenes. Yeah, as a fighter? Yes. Yeah, I would agree. Um, directing, you know, kudos to Patty Jenkins. Yes. Um, and I, I just... Oh, the here's my thing about the whole women directors not getting a chance to direct tentpole movies, blockbuster movies, mm-hmm. big budget movies. Because as a whole, Hollywood just doesn't... You either have indie movies or you have these big blockbuster movies. And a lot of the True. mid-range budget movies just aren't there anymore. So you have these directors that they come from indie with like one or two films that are men. And then they get this, you know deal of doing a blockbuster. My, fa- my, my favorite story to tell is, um, I don't recall her name, but she directed um, Selma. She directed Selma. Uh-huh. And she, she was in the same class as um, another director. And she was like, oh, I just got this film. It's called Selma. It's going to be great. You know, I'm so excited. He's like, yeah, I just got my first film too, Jurassic World. Mm. I mean, Mm -hmm. come on. If that doesn't tell you. Exactly. Like, there's just this, the the double standard of people not, studios not thinking female directors can do. And the thing is, Patty, a lot of these female directors have a lot, a lot more experience than some of these other Mm -hmm. directors that, male directors that are given reins and big budgets that that don't. It's so stupid. It's like they feel like they can't. Um, direct they can't bring um, the vision uh, to fruition or that it'll and yet you you see... actually I don't think that's the issue do I don't think I, I think it's part of the issue but I honestly think that the problem the main problem is they don't think a female director can take control of the reins behind the camera with the whole crew mm. I think it comes down to to the crew members that are mostly men that whether or not they take the female director seriously Mm. That's part of the thing, I think, and and that's really is it is unfortunate because if, if there's actually a Tumblr where you have female directors saying telling their stories, some of the stories they tell. But I think it's a lot with the crew mm-hmm. and a lot of the people that are surrounding the director, whether or not they can take hold of all of those people and kind of lead them. Lead them. Mm-hmm. And I, that's really still shouldn't be the issue. And I think that's part of the reason, because I think Patty Jenkins proves, I think Catherine Bigelow proves that female directors have a vision. And the thing I like about female directors is there's a little bit more heart and feeling in in those action movies yes. um, than with male directors. And I really hope Hollywood kind of takes notice that we as an audience are kind of getting tired of the same old thing Mm -hmm. of what these white male directors keep giving us and white male superheroes for that matter i'm just we're just kind of over it i feel like why have we not had a black widow series or solo movie why can't and i'm so glad that captain marvel is coming but i'm like it's which by the way it needed two directors one male and one female i think they're married but whatever. Again, same vein and the and same problems. thing of it's, like them not thinking a female director can handle a big budget movie. I just I can't. Does it really make a lot of sense? And it just comes down to they just don't feel it's it's kind of misogynistic. Yeah. In nature, yeah. of them just sexist. Mm-hmm. Of I don't because it doesn't mm-hmm. reflect the person's skill. It reflects the person who has the belief of the person's skill. So it, it, it's it's their own sexism and their own misogyny. I think we just are craving more diversity yes. and more voices. But I think we as an audience are just wanting, craving want more diversity, more, more voices. Yes. Like we want, we want like more women behind so and ex- in front of. That's why I'm so excited next year for, uh, for Black Panther. I just yeah. it blows my mind. I, as much as I've loved all the hero movies that I've loved. I would have never, around the time even of like Iron Man, Iron Man Two, have ever thought that we'd have a Black Panther movie come to screen. I would have not thought that we would have had a Luke Cage series come to the silver screen, and yet they come out, and they've actually overall at least mm-hmm. been amazing. Um, I think my only thing is I kind of like to see some Asian people. <laughs> Um, yes. I really would. I mean, I, I get it. 
Um, but at the same time, it would be it would be nice if there were a few more Asians out there um, that that was that was represent, represented in movies. Because mm-hmm. um, I feel like there there are a lot of other there are diverse casts, but maybe there's just one Asian or not an, even an Asian at all. Like I just, I would, I would, I would like to see it at some point. And we've um, had unfortunate opportunities, but then they've gotten squandered and heavily whitewashed, like Ghost in the Shell. Oh God, I saw, and, I refused to watch that. And the thing that I, <laughs> I wish I still would have never watched the, um, which would have been a, such an amazing opportunity that was so squandered for the Last Airbender. Oh, yeah, I never watched that either. Um, it, yeah. We're totally off topic. Let's get back off. to Wonder Anyways. Woman and Patty Jenkins did yes. an amazing job. Um, the How she filmed Paradise Island and then how she filmed World War One, just the aesthetic overall. Yes. Um, the great shot. Timing, great just, cine- great yeah. cinematography. Great yeah. set design and special The effects. editing was really good. It was just a well-paced action, like, Blockbuster. I mean, yes. as opposed to Batman vs. Superman, uh, where it was just a really long movie, mm-hmm. um, which I really appreciated that Wonder Woman was, it was not, I mean, you understood the messages that they were obviously telling us mm-hmm. um, that were very relevant to today. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that might be what some of the critics might, the ones that didn't like it, is maybe they thought it was a little too... Um, this is my thing. obvious yes. in some of in some of the what they're trying to say. But I is, didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. This is my thing when it comes to that. Some people just feel like they art imitates life. Art imitates life very often, and specifically when you are dealing with a a, a storyline and character set that actually easily parallel current events. Mm-hmm. It's kind of to me, just a, a waste of an opportunity to not make that link. And especially in this case, you have the character's comic, the character's and the situation historical, and then current. So right. you've got art imitating history, imitating life. It's, you just, yeah. it's unfortunate, but... At the same time, these connections exist. And at this point, it's I feel it's better to be woke about the situation than to just sweep it under the rug. Right. I agree. Um, Patty Jenkins did a great job of pacing the movie. The scre- the screenplay was really well written. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Was di- like, I get it. What, like, I get why some people might think it it was a little preachy or whatever of I believe in love of reducing it to that, which, you know, I'm sorry, but really, I, I truly believe that statement. If more people were kind to one another and tolerant and just overall mm-hmm. more loving, um, it, maybe the world wouldn't be such a harsh place. I felt the, the movie was hopeful, um, yes. and I appreciated what Patty did and what the screenwriter did, and I thought the story translated well, and it was brisk, it was breezy, it was still, like, fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Very um, enjoyable. Very enjoyable. I mean, it was a fun ride, yes. um, and I, like, teared up a bit, and she hit all the right notes, and I think that's what I love about um, the movies. It hit all the right notes. It was It, it was just the right amount. Of movie, mm-hmm. it wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. Um, the soundtrack, the score, yes, was awesome. I love that score. There was a couple of scenes when the score hit, and I actually got like, sh- like you know, goosebumps. Yes, because the it was it was build. on point. Oh, <laughs> the score. Um, composers don't get enough credit um, for for what they do because a lot of when the score hits, it really kind of makes you well up. Mm-hmm. With me, uh, anyway, for me. I get a little teary eye. Um, the editing, the cinematography. Uh, Chris Pine did really well, j- good job. Yeah, of his Steve Trevor. Like, yeah, it's... yeah. This Steve Trevor, this because normally Steve's kind of stupid. <laughs> actually, when you think of like the seventies, yeah, <laughs> the seventies Wonder Woman. No offense, um, to, uh, never, uh, no offense to the, yeah. 
But no, but it, that the character was just written to be kind of yeah. like not bright. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and even in the comics, Steve Trevor's not bright. Oh. Um, let's say, oh, they did a lot of great little things, little nods to the comics. So mm -hmm. with Wonder Woman, um, the assist, uh, I think Steve's assistant, that woman's name, she was in the comics, mm -hmm. uh, Golden Age, Golden Age comment comics, but she played like, I don't know, she was like something like a like another sidekick for Diana mm -hmm. where she, it was like something with the college girls would come and rescue them too. And she would, and she was the leader of that group of people. Um, I might get that wrong. Um, and then Wonder Woman busting through windows. Yes. She did that a lot in the comics. Yes. Um, as well as like the as little bracelets. The I love the fact that this movie also emphasized because a lot of, so, depending on what comic it is and what character it is, is it costume, is it uniform, or is it armor? And I'm so glad that this movie emphasized the fact that Wonder Woman's outfit is actually armor because she deflected bullets with the mm. uh, bracers, but she also deflected them with her boots. She deflected yeah. them with, some of them occasionally did hit her breastplate and bounced off. So, like, it emphasized it's actually mystically created armor well the, it's actually her the bracelets are they're not really great they're um what you may call it um what are they actually called anyway the bracelets but there's actually a specific name for them i'm sure you guys will tell us yeah. um but they were actually from zeus's shield uh. um crafted by hephaestus or someone uh anyway <laughs> So yeah, in the comics, uh, right. so you've got all of that comic comic knowledge. Comic knowledge. I also like the mix of the origin stories as well because they did that handy thing from New Fifty Two, um, Golden Age, and the other versions. Of course, say that um, she was crafted from clay, and how it's a begged Zeus, and that storyline was in there yeah. too. But like in the New 52, that's actually just a, a lie to get her through. She's actually Zeus's daughter. Right. And this one, now the difference with the between the two is New 52, the rest of the gods still exist. And it's kind of that whole, of course, as Zeus's daughter, uh, Hera's coming after you. But they gave her the Ares as the main villain um, this time. So... I really like how they redid that. I really liked her development as she comes to learn the truth throughout the movie. You come to also see her embracing her godhood and using those abilities. So it was it was very well done. Very yeah, very I'm, good across the board. I also love the little nod they did to the old series because you had. Um, when she was trying on the clothes and right. she finally settles on the look that's almost like the main Dinah look from like the... The suffragist? The, yeah. That was the suffragist look. Take off the, there was a scene when she goes to strip down to just her armor and it's very reminiscent of the um, the way that she would do the, the spinning toss off stuff, unclipping the hair and all that stuff. So it was a lot of nods to different comic history and show yeah. history. So it was... Great to see Wonder Woman on screen finally, mm -hmm. um, and done well. And done really well. I I can only hope. My my fear is, I think Hollywood's going to treat this as like an anomaly, and it isn't going to be a watershed of female directors directing big tentpole movies. Unfortunately, um, here's the thing: is I really do think that if you're going to have a female heroine it would be nice to have a female director behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I know that seems like reverse sexism, but we've had so many male directors directing, you know, action movies anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just feel like it would be refreshing if we did, if we have a female superhero or action hero for for the for a female director to take the take yeah. the reins. Um, and I know that that um, Patty Jenkins being petitioned to to direct Superman um, or Batman too, um, I am I'm selfish in that I I don't think she's gonna have time to do Batman and Wonder Woman because there is gonna be a Wonder Woman too, and typically it takes about four years out of a out of a director's life mm -hmm. to do a movie. I think I could be wrong, and if that's the case, she's not gonna have that's time. That's a lot. Um, yeah, it's a huge commitment for a director. I mean, and that's I... why it's like that's why it's kind of hard for female women directors to direct. 
as much because if they have families, it takes a lot of time out of their yeah. lives. Um, Joss is already on for Batgirl. I'm so excited so, about that. Yes. <laughs> Although I will say, I kind as much as I'm happy about Joss doing Batgirl. I, again, I kind of would like it to be a female director. Right. But Joss is such a feminist that I'm actually okay with him. Mm -hmm. He's proven that he treats a female lead really, really well. I'm happy about Joss uh, directing Batgirl. Although, yeah, I mean, I've, I kind of would like to see a female director do that, but Joss is so feminist that I'm okay with it. I um, think he do a good job, but, but I also agree. Like, I feel like at least there needs to be, because if I'm not mistaken, he's also supposed to be pinning it, which, mm -hmm. mm, yeah, Maybe. but also at the same time, I've also, like, female pr production or something, like, I feel like there needs to be more, rep there does need to be I more I mean, there does. I mean, I just, and that's my fear is, Hollywood will treat this as an anomaly and there won't be a watershed of female directors, unfortunately. Um, although I do keep pushing Rai Russo Young, who directed Before I Fall, and um, I think she could do a big tentpole movie. There's just something about her. Even I know I'm being biased because I actually got to meet her and she follows me on Twitter, but I think she's there's something, that she's got something. She's talented and she's got a really great aesthetic about her directing. Um, and she took a YA novel kind of um, screenplay. I mean, it was based on a YA novel. Um, and I actually like that movie. Most people probably will disagree with me, but I thought Before I Fall was actually a pretty decent movie for that for that genre. And mm -hmm. I think she actually elevated it along with Zoe, Zoe Deutsch. Um, they both elevated that material for it to be a little bit beyond um, a young adult uh, film. But overall, Wonder Woman, A plus for a me. Plus plus. Uh, a plus plus from Jeremy. <laughs> Seriously, hope hopefully we haven't spoiled too much for anybody who hasn't seen it. If you haven't seen it, you need to go see this movie. You need to go see it. Go see. It's important that, to to support this movie, even though I think ho Hollywood should be getting a message that people are supporting this movie. It made over two hundred twenty globally. Globally, it's probably going to be over 120 million domestically mm -hmm. after everything is done. Done. I might be overshooting that number. I'm kind of hoping it, it's over 120. It was definitely over 100 million. Um, Patty Jenkins, congratulations to her. She is uh, the highest-grossing female director of a blockbuster movie. 93% um, uh, Rotten Tomato, fresh nice. on the fresh meter. Um, she's broken a lot of records, uh, with this movie. Um, I don't, I actually don't think Wonder Woman's going to suffer from a, from a sophomore slump if there's a two. I don't think um, so. Um, although I'm kind of hoping she has a female love interest because she is bisexual. <laughs> oh my God. Can we please <laughs> make I mean, her, can we, can we please? I mean, um, we'll see. I mean, that would be groundbreaking if they did give her a female love interest in Wonder Woman 2. Um, that would almost be pushing it. Although, it's already been confirmed that she is bisexual. It's just not really been portrayed on screen. Mm -hmm. um, but I would love to see that. Um, have you seen the trailer for Atomic Bomb with Charlize yes. Theron? <laughs> Good gravy. I am excited for that. I'm so excited. Well. I feel like, total side note, I feel like Charlize has taken over what Angelina Jolie has left in her wake of not doing action films anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like Charlize has kind of taken that, um, taken that I'm so mantle I'm so glad for her to be, do her. that, too, because, I mean, because it sucks that Angelina hasn't done any, you know, in a while because yeah. she was also so good at it. But Charlize is also very good yeah. with drama, very good. Action. She, with action, like, She's dog. convincing. Yes. She's convincing. I mean, I still think Angelina it kicks ass when yes. it comes to that. Um, it's a little apples and oranges. I'm not going to say who's better than the other. Mm -mm. Um, but I do. But with movies like this one miss, coming up, and I, like I said, I yeah, miss I'm Salt. excited. Salt. Oh, my God. I wish there would have been a second one. Oh, my God. Angelina just... I get it. She has a family. She wants to direct. But, man, mm. she just left. 
And she left she on a high note. If you're too. gonna leave, leave, leave on a, a high, high note, note that you have you are in that genre and you are at the top of your game yes. in that genre. And oh my god, I just miss her so much being a badass yes. freaking heroine. Um, but Charlize in Atomic Bomb, I can't wait for that one. Mm. I know I went off topic on that, but we just need would I would like, like to see more awesome, female That would be a freaking awesome movie though if there was any way that they could either be partners or the or uh antagonists against each other in an action movie no no no. i've already pitched my expendables female version yes (laughs) and it has her and may i don't think i included charlize but uh i had uh michelle rodriguez um oh i had who else did i have um i did it in the comics comment section where I had my five top, um, five top or six top uh, female action um, actresses, and to do a female That'd Expendables, awesome. and Angelina to be in that, and maybe she, and I think Charlize might have, um, and then Sigourney Weaver, mm-hmm. just because fucking Sigourney Weaver. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, Let's I had see. Michelle Rodriguez. Who else did I have? Maybe it was also, um, what's her name? Um, the kickboxer or the UFC fighter. Oh, Gina Carano. Yeah, Gina. Gina. Oh my God, Carano. Yeah, Car- Carano. Car- Carano. Car- Gina. Whatever. Y'all know who we talking you about. You know who we're talking about. Fucking Super A. Girly. Yes, she's a way better actress than the blonde. I don't remember her name. Ronda um, Rousey. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, Ronda. True. You need. To, I mean, you're a little rough around the edges. Gina is much, much better. She's a little bit more of a natural. But mm. I think I had like a whole thing of my favorite female action heroes in in the expendables kind of female version yeah oh, if only it could happen awesome. if only it could happen in real life people yes uh but anyway that does it that for now it's us yeah yeah it's so, been a long review i'm yeah, gonna have to cut it down it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna be cut down a lot so um, anyways if you like this review yeah please subscribe please like, us. like us comment please below m- uh share us with your friends yeah Yep. So we'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Hi, y'all. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Davina. And welcome back to Whoosh Bang Pow. Uh, so we just got done. <laughs> like he's moving his leg. You it's can't little, see it. It's his little nervous tick, and he moves the couch every time he does it. It's I'm like, sorry, stop. But it's exciting. Um, yeah, we just got back from watching Wonder Woman. Oh, uh, It was my yes. second viewing. Um. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. Well, this is my freshman. I, I saw no, it on Friday funny, night. The funny thing was, so I was saying um, to Robert because we wanted he wanted to come reluctantly because he wants to get interested in stuff that I'm mm-hmm. interested in, and he was like, "No, we can see it next weekend yeah. because he wants it to be a fresh viewing instead of us going in a friend group that was watching it last night." Okay. Only to come to find out that it's your second viewing, and my first viewing. Yeah. No, but I mean, I cool. did, you know I. Was a, I, I just I didn't want to wait. I didn't want right. to wait until to, to, to it's Sunday. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to wait until Sunday, so I, I watched it earlier because it was fucking. It awesome. was phenomenal. Oh uh, if you've not seen Wonder Woman, uh, spoiler alert: we're gonna have spoilers in this. Yes, yeah, spoilers. Review. This is this review um, will contain spoilers. spoilers. Yes, it will. Spoilers, 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 spoilers. You have been warned. There are spoilers. Okay. So now that you've been warned. Uh, that we're going to give spoilers. Uh, Jeremy, what's your grade? My grade was an A+. Plus. Yeah, I'd have to say it's an A+. Plus, and I've, read, I, I've read a few reviews out there. I've also read some reviews that have been pretty misogynistic in nature. Mm-hmm. One um, of the things, and that's, speaking of me, one of the things that I did appreciate about the movie, particularly in the the Themyscirian scenes and everything mm-hmm. is, I mean, she's gorgeous. Yes. She's they, all, they all were gorgeous. Everybody. Take, us, yes. take me to the Amazon island. She wants to go to Themyscira right now. But they, I may be the shortest cow there, but yes. damn it. But it wasn't even like reflected on a thought. It was no. just a given and a thing. And then you get into man's world and it's like, hubba hubba. Yeah. But at the same time, what I appreciate about it is her nonchalance towards it as well. It's like, well, you don't have beautiful women elsewise. <laughs> like, 
what what the hell? Uh, uh, I re- and speaking of like massaging, I also appreciate what they did in this more modern take because every time that she enters a situation that is supposed to be because it's it takes place in World War One, mm-hmm. so it's like the the nineteen what tens nineteen eighteen yeah nineteen eighteen so it takes place way back then. It's clearly man's world at this mm-hmm. time, but her. Her her ability to be able to just to blow past that and just and not even really trying to force people to see, but just the fact that she refuses to accept that her voice will not be heard and her help will not be taken when she has the ability to do all of the things that she can do. Mm-hmm. So I I love that about it. Yeah, uh, Gal Gal Gadot Gal Gadot Gal Gadot. Yes. Um, did a wonderful job. Her, she does naive in just the right amount of naivety. Yeah. Uh, for it to, for it not to get hokey or mm-hmm. cheesy. Um, I mean, she's, she was perfect in that role. Yeah. I can't imagine actually any other actress in that role. No, 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 uh, no. her acting was really, I think, yes. I've, I mean, from Fast and the Furious to where she is now, her acting, not that it was bad, but it, she's definitely gotten better she, yes. as an actress. Um, with all the emotions that she's pulled, grief, yeah. frustration, yeah. the scene particularly, and again, we told y'all spoilers, the scene um, where all was for naught after, you know, saving that village and then the right. monster gas bomb hit and the just the frustration that comes over her when she just looks around and it's like... Yeah, there's just death and gas all around her. Yeah. It's, um, that was... Actually, the scene that got me was the end scene where she's like in shackled. Mm-hmm. She's shackled by the by the, the metal, and then she sees the, you know, the. I'm not going to totally give away this, but there's the emotional. Part. I don't want to totally give away the but ending. There's a, there's but a the emotional that happens, climax and it just makes her, and she ugh. sells it in the like vengeance of it all. Yes, um, that that whole that scene when she rushes through the guys, yeah, and, and you she, can still see the yeah. pain and the rage in her face. Kudos. Yeah, and that was the other thing. It was well shot. It well shot, and then kudos to her as well because. Now there's a couple issues I can t- with editing where there's a couple times where you can see the double, but right. aside from those, like she's very convincing in action. Scenes. Yeah, as a fighter. Yes. Yeah, I would agree. Um, directing, you know, kudos to Patty Jenkins. Yes. Um, and I, I just, oh, the here's my thing about the whole women directors not getting a chance to direct tentpole movies, blockbuster movies, Mm -hmm. big budget movies, because as a whole, Hollywood just doesn't, you either have indie movies or you have these big blockbuster movies, and a lot of the mid-range budget movies just aren't there anymore. So you have these directors that they come from indie with like one or two films that are men, and then they get this, you know, deal of doing a blockbuster. My my, My favorite story to tell is... Um, I don't recall her name, but she directed um, Selma. She directed Selma. Uh-huh. And she she was in the same class as um, another director. And she was like, oh, I just got this film. It's called Selma. It's going to be great. You know, I'm so excited. He's like, yeah, I just got my first film too, Jurassic World. Mm. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. come on. <laughs> if that doesn't tell you. Exactly. Like, there's just this, the, the double standard of... People not studios not thinking female directors can can't. do, and the thing is, Patty. A lot of these female directors have a lot, a lot more experience than some of these other mm-hmm. directors that male directors that are given reins and big budgets that yeah, so that it's like, don't. It's and so I just, stupid. It's like they I feel do. like they can't um, direct. They can't bring um, the vision uh, to fruition, or that it'll. And yet, you you see, actually, I don't think that's the issue. I don't. I, I think it's part of the issue, but I honestly think the the problem, the main problem, is they don't think a female director can take control of the reins behind the camera with the whole crew. Mm. I think it comes down to to the crew members that are mostly men that whether or not they take the female director seriously. Mm. That's part of the thing, I think, and and that's really is it is unfortunate because if, there's actually a Tumblr 
where you have female directors saying, telling their stories, some of the stories they tell. But I think it's a lot with the crew mm -hmm. and a lot of the people that are surrounding the director, whether or not they can take hold of all of those people and kind of lead, the, lead them. Mm -hmm. And I, that's really still shouldn't be the issue. And I think that's part of the reason because I think Patty Jenkins proves, I think, Catherine Bigelow proves that female directors have a vision. And the thing I like about female directors is there's a little bit more heart and feeling in in those action movies yes. um, than with male directors. And I really hope Hollywood kind of takes notice that we as an audience are kind of getting tired of the same old thing mm -hmm. of what these white male directors keep giving us.